welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we are taking a look at Dangerous Space. This is a print and play roll and write. Um, very, very inexpensive, very uh, cheap to you know, purchase the pages to. And uh, this one in particular, they're going to be coming out with a new uh, personnel and mission page each month. So something that you can continuously go back to um, and, and you know purchase the new page but you print it out uh, at some point I'm going to be wanting to laminate these uh, so I can reuse them and not have to keep printing them but one of the nice things is is that each of the uh, personnel here at the top can be mixed with any of the missions so there's actually a you know dotted line here that they're meant to be cut you can see here that this is a um, you know, th there's a different mission here, and they're going to be coming out with new ships uh, and new um, new people to play as, or heroes, or whatever. Space Rangers. Um, here you can see here's one that I uh, have already played through, and here's uh, another one. So, um, in this mission in particular, we need to eliminate the boss. So the boss is the adapting brawler here. He's gonna be located in the command center, uh, pretty far away from us. Now, we have a choice at the beginning of the game. We may enter in at any one of these uh, three doors. So one, two, or three, and then work our way around. In order to win the game, we need to tag all of these checkpoints here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and defeat the monster. So I can't just run in here, take this guy out, and boom, we're done. As I go along, there are various supplies or bonuses I can pick up. Those are located here, um, or there's, say, a grenade here. There's also enemies or threats that are in these uh, green boxes here. So, you know, the, the iconography is uh, a little unique, but for example, here, these these guys right here are clever pirates. And these light green spaces that you can see are their kind of threat zones or the dangerous spaces in the game. So it's a, it's a double play on words, the dangerous space, this is like a a ship in space, you're a space ranger, but also dangerous spaces um, that when you enter, they will, um, you have to complete a reaction check. We'll get to that all here in just a minute. But um, so you have your light green spaces that signify where the threat uh, will react to you. You have the dark gray spaces. These are walls, uh, unless otherwise specified, you can't move through them, you have to go around them. And then the you know just plain white spaces here are there, there's no restrictions for for moving through those or placing numbers in them. There's also thinner corridors. They're a little harder to see, but for example, here is one. Here is one. There's one here. We'll talk about why that one looks a little different. And there's one here. Until you have actually entered a room uh, via a corridor, anything in the other room is not going to attack you. But for example, this pirate here, this clever pirate can actually see all the way down the corridor into the other room. So if you step onto one of these spaces, even though you're still in the workshop and quarters room, it can attack you. That's the only reason that this one is different from the rest. But for the most part, if I choose to come in here at engineering, I can take on this threat and then I can spend time in this room before moving into here and neither of these other guys will attack me until I enter their room or enter into one of their uh, dangerous spaces. For the threats, to defeat them, each of them have these little pips on the outside of them. These are the sides that you need to attack. So the clever pirate here has three defense and two HP. The two HP is represented by two little pips to fill in. The three defense means I have to roll a three or higher on a die in order to attack it. The four plus is anytime I enter one of these spaces, write a number in one of their spaces, I have to roll, re-roll that die I used to enter that space. And if it's a four plus, it does damage to me. Um, during the threat phase, if a five plus is rolled, it's going to do any 
uh, active clever pirate is going to do one damage to me. Similar here to the vigilant hunter, a uh, four plus will activate uh, this guy right here. It will do two damage upon activation. You have to roll a four or higher to damage it, and it's got three pips one, two, three. And anything five plus uh, in its threat zone, it will attack. So the clever pirates are actually quicker to attack if you get near them, um, but the vigilant hunter is just going to hit you harder outright. And then last but not least, we have the boss here. The boss here, once we enter into this final command zone, we will he will attack us on a three plus for two damage. We have to roll a five or a six, a five or better to hit him. He's got four HP and he retaliates on a three plus. And this weak spot here means that we have to have a three in our dice pool. Obviously, we don't have to use a three because we need a five or six, but there has to be a three present showing in our dice pool before we can even attack him. So that's his weak spot. And each of these guys has some unique information on them. We will cover that when we, we uh, actually start attacking them. So that's kind of the objective of the game. The boss, however, is the only one that we have to defeat. Each of the rangers has a uh, gear for move, shoot, and defend. And so each one of them starts with their gear right here. So our first person, or our first uh, gear is our movement boots, nitro boots here, which means we can move one in any orthogonal direction. All right, so that means that when we, if we start here at this door, our first die placement has to be either here, here, or here. It can't be, we can't jump a, a white space, uh, an empty space. But then after we have moved away from the door, as long as we are one away orthogonally, we can use a die to fill in any space to anywhere we've already been. So the objective here is to fill in all of, all of the white space, but to create a path leading from the door to the various checkpoints along the way, and then eventually to the boss, and then to the exit. Those paths, ideally, we want them to be sequential, which means that every number following each other is only one higher or lower than the number before it. So if I put a two here, this could be a one or a three. If it's a three, this could be a four or a two. And I wanna keep that sequential order, one away, up or down, as I create paths from one check mark to one checkpoint to the next, or from the door to a checkpoint, so on and so forth. Once I've decided on, say, this door, these other ones are, are blocked off to me, and those are just, say, dead, dead space. Um, so that's our move gear. As you can see, if I choose to upgrade my boots, I can either then choose a branching path here where I can move one in any direction, so diagonally or orthogonally, or I can choose to move one, and if I want to, I can increase the pip number on that die. And we'll talk about why you would want to do that here in a second. And then the last one is a range two with a increase in the pip number. But if I choose to go the one diagonal route, I have blocked off the, I cannot also take the top branch. You can only take one branch uh, from each of these gear sets. So for shoot at a certain point here, I have to be one away. But then if I choose this path, I can shoot two away and increase a pip, which would be helpful for reaching, say, a five or six, or I can come down here and shoot three away, and then the three away plus a, a guided attack. We'll talk about that when we get there, but that's probably the direction we're gonna go with this big bad boss. Last is a defend. You can throw away a one, so it has to be showing a one pip here. Throw one of those away out of your pool to defend one attack or one damage. Here you can um, spend that one and re-roll it, uh, or here you can spend a one or a two and then re-roll it. Let me make sure I have the right, uh, oh no, this is spend a one to defend, and this is re-roll a threat die before it activates. So those are actually pretty helpful, whereas this symbol here is... Uh, uh, decrease or increase decrease all reaction check rolls by the listed amount. So this would be by one, or this would be by two. Again, this is a lot to cover. Every single gear uh, you can also there are two skills you can unlock. 
So essentially every time you reach a checkpoint, as long as you your path has kept within that sequential order, you get to choose an upgrade. And that's either moving up an upgrade tech tree on one of your gear or choosing one of your skills. So let's talk about how we go about using the dice. Well, to start off with, we get one, uh, we'll call this the hero die. The pink ones are the good dice and the black dice are the threat dice. We're gonna come in here at, oh, let's see. Actually, we're gonna come in here at the med lab. So this is the door I'm going to enter in, all right? I'm gonna cross these other two doors off because they, at this point, um, cannot help me. So the med lab here has one threat die that I have to roll. If I had come in here to the loading bay, I would have to be rolling two threat die along with my single hero die. And you can never go below this starting number. So from the med lab mess hall here, I will obviously be moving either into the loading bay or down into the workshop quarters and adding a die. But then when I move into engineering from either one of those places, I don't go back down to one, I stay at two. And if for some strange reason I were to ever jump into the command center early, I would have to start rolling three and it would stay three the rest of the game. <clears throat> but we're gonna start with our one die and our one threat die. This is what we will roll until we either A, reach a checkpoint here with the little white in the center. That means I get an extra hero die to roll every round. So here's one right here. Um, or I enter a room which is going to increase the number of threat dice I have. So but for right now, we're just starting one and one. So the first thing you do is roll out your dice. Then you have to go through the threat phase. So let's start by rolling out our dice. And this is a, a good roll for us because we have entered this room. So I'm gonna circle this pirate here to let us know that he is active, all right? He, however, only activates on a five plus and only on the black dice. The black dice are the threat dice. These are the hero dice. So the more black dice you're rolling, the more chances of one of the bad guys activating. But we're good for now. Now, at this point, we move on and it's our turn. So we get to, um, during the explore phase, we have to write down these two numbers somewhere on our sheet. Now, it's very important uh, that we, A, Think about how we can make a continuous path from the door at this point to this checkpoint, all right, because then we get an upgrade, we get a die, that's big time, super early. Also, though, our movement is only one away. So remember, the name of the game is writing down the numbers of the pips on your dice to create sequential lines from checkpoint to checkpoint, but I can only move one space away each time from a space I have already explored. I could explore down here and then immediately jump over and explore this way if I wanted to. But for right now, I can only go one away, which means I need to be very careful about the numbers I choose until I have created some space for me to have some throwaways. Also, to claim, say, this uh, health booster here, which Right now, I only have access to these uh, this number of hit points. As soon as I claim this, I can unlock these three, and then these four, and then these three, and then these four, as I keep unlocking health boosters throughout the map. But in order to pick this up, I have to put a number in two of the orthogonal boxes to it that are the same. So if I put a two here, then there has to be either a two here or a two here, or I lose it. So where do we want to put our first number here? I can start either here or here. If I go here, that is a dangerous space and I have to roll for reaction um, with the clever pirate. So I think I'm gonna stay away and I'm gonna go two and I'm gonna go one. So both times I have written in my number within one away of a space I've already filled in, so I'm not breaking my movement, okay? And I have stayed in sequential order. Now, ideally, I roll a two on the next one, I could put it right here and then put a three. A two and a three would be an ideal roll coming up. And then I could link up to the checkpoint, I'd get my uh, health boost, and we'd be off to a great start. But 
more than likely that's not going to happen. But that's it, that's how quickly a turn is, especially early on when you're rolling so few dice, and now we have a bad turn. So, uh, alrighty. But this isn't the end of the world, because and I'll tell you why. So first things first, the clever pirate is going to attack. This was obviously a six, is a five plus. Um, and ooh, I just read this. <laughs> I just read this uh, thing, and so we're gonna have to deal with this. So the clever pirate here says, if you mark a space immediately diagonal to this threat, cross out an uncollected item. Okay, so I believe that that uncollected item can be. Um, well, I don't have a collected item yet. Uh, I'll have to check on that. I don't know if I have to say lose this for the future. Or if it was like, say, one of these adrenaline boosts that I collected, I'd have to use them up. He's a pirate, he steals things, but maybe we'll just cross that off and say I can't claim that at any point during the game. But uh, he is going to attack me. I do not have a one to throw away, so I'm gonna have to take that damage. So I'm gonna go in here and just fill in that plus there. Uh, I've lost that hit point and there's no healing. Uh, there's only just gaining more hit points in the game. But, so the threat phase has now been resolved. The good news is, is that I have something, I have two dice here that can easily uh, break the clever pirate of their three defense. But I have to get adjacent to him because right now I can only shoot one away. And that's not diagonally, that has to be orthogonally. I don't want to necessarily put my four or my six right here because then I'm losing my chance to uh, create or keep up with my sequential run to the checkpoint. So I'm gonna put my four right here, and then I'm gonna use the six to shoot, all right? I have to be one away, and that die has to be greater than three, but I've done all that, so this is going to be shot. But at the same token, I also put a four there in the dangerous space. So he already activated on the six, but he's gonna activate again because I slid in next to him. So I have to take this four for the reaction, and roll it, and luckily it was not higher than a four, so I am safe. I technically should have done this before I filled in the attack. But he is now halfway gone because I've filled in these two pips, but I can't attack him from this space again. I have to work my way around and hit him from this side, coming in this direction, because this is where the pip is. Uh, the pip isn't here, it's not here, it's coming in from the left. But that is my two rolls, and so we just pick these up and we roll again. All right, one and a three. So we are safe in that regards because he is not attacking. So what do I want to do with these uh, numbers here? So I could put a one here if I wanted to, and but that would I would lose my opportunity to get this, or I, I could still get it if I put a two over there. But I think what we're gonna do is risk, it's still early, so I'm gonna put a one here so I have to now take this, roll this out, and it was, it was a five. So the pirate got me, it has attacked back, and we've spent that one, and this three mm, is right there. And so I'm going to lose this now. Because I, I could maybe sneak over here and then sneak in here and here and not ever have to like cross in here or way down here. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, these clever pirates though are getting very tricky. Until I get some range, they're, they're, they're gonna be stealing some stuff from me. I'm getting too close. But I've used up my two dice and so we start again. And so now I have a five and a three. The three, however, is the threat die. So I'm good there. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and take this guy out. So I'm gonna put my three right here. And so I entered his threat area. I have to roll again. It was a four plus, so he's gonna hit me again. This guy is tearing me a new one, but I can now attack him with a five and I have taken him out. So I'm gonna put a big X through him because he, I'm basically, I can wander around this med lab as much as I want and be pretty safe, all right? Unfortunately, I don't get anything for defeating him, um, but that's fine. Uh, again, I've created kind of a safe space to not have to worry about what this die says. All right. 
so this is what we're going to do. What are we going to do? 4, 3, 3. So I'm going to put my 3 here. I'm going to go ahead and put my 1 right here. So at this point, I have connected a line from the door to a checkpoint. So I can circle this checkpoint. All right, I have made a continuous line. I couldn't, I couldn't do it from here because that was diagonal, so it had to be orthogonal. I could have put my one here. Um, I'm, I'm still thinking about that. But then we go and we, you can either just count it. I like to uh, kind of go like this to draw it so I know that's my thing. And you can see two, one, one, one. I stayed within sequential order. So boom, a couple things are gonna happen here is one, I'm going to get an extra uh, hero die to roll. So now I have three actions essentially I can take on my turn, but also I get to choose an upgrade here. So let's look at my skills real quick. When you use a defend gear reroll, you may reroll one additional time. That'd be good. And this one is add plus one range to your weapons. I think that what I want is more range right off the bat because I'm getting to the point now where I'm going to have to travel down this corridor here and all of this is dangerous space for this one pirate here. I want to be able to take a, a shot on him as quickly as possible, ideally if I can unlock a second one. So maybe we'll come down here to this checkpoint next and think about that. But we're gonna take the three range because I do want this, this icon here which allows me to basically shoot through uh, the enemy. And if I hit, say, on this side, I can also take out this side. So if I can hit this guy, I can also take him out there, and he's done. Definitely want that for this big guy down here. But there we go. So we have, uh, we have created our sequential order. We have gotten our upgraded die. We have gotten our gear upgrade. The last thing we need to do is mark off how much time it took us to make it to that checkpoint. So this very last spot up here that we haven't touched on, we look at the highest number that's part of our sequential order. So we did really good this time. It's two and we mark off one, two time spent. So that was a really good uh, first run. Okay, so now where do we want to go? Um, we can branch off from anywhere. So I could I could go here, I could go here, I could go here. I could even start throwing dice into here. Um, but remember, I want to, if at all possible, create sequential, uh, to be able to create a sequential path from any one checkpoint. So it's either gonna have to come from this door, so I could go this way, or it's gonna have to come from here um, and move down here. But then also when I decide to come back and enter the command center, it's got to come from one of these two spots. So here we go. We are starting another one and we're still in this room or, you know, we haven't entered another room. You're never really like in a specific room. There's no like little um, dot that you follow around. You're just kind of, it's where you have explored. And if you have activated an enemy by exploring that area or stepping into his danger zone, then they can attack you. No matter where you feel like you might be, whatever room you might be in, as long as you've explored that room, that person is active. So let's see here. Um, and last but not least, it doesn't matter right now, but these are like hazard spaces. Basically, I can't jump through them. So if I had my two plus, I couldn't go here and be like one, two, and kind of pass through this hazard. I have to put a number in the hazard before I can go beyond it. Um, that's all that really means. Um, hazardous or dangerous spaces are the same way. So I'm trying to figure out how I can keep up with my uh, stuff here and what we're gonna do actually is claim our first health boost before we do anything else I'm gonna put my four here and my three there so I have a three and a three I can circle this and we will immediately use it to claim this next and you have to go left to right with the health boosts you can't just say oh I'll take the two that are four plus instead of the two that are three plus 
uh, and I have a one, so I guess the one is gonna go right here. Start making our way down this way. All right. So a six is not very helpful right now. Um, these here can be used to increase or decrease a die. Um, this one's gonna allow me to increase a uh, die by value of two, but I, if I get this, I wanna save it for my attack on this guy. Uh, and that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot of dice uh, mitigation unless I get my move here where I can mitigate my dice and maybe that's where we go next. Um, but we can stick with the ones and we can stick with the threes and fours. So it's just a six I'm gonna have to throw away somewhere. So I can put a four right here. I can put a six right here just to use up use it up on that hazard space and then we'll put a one right here so I'm making my way down here uh, as soon as I enter this room this guy will be active but these dangerous spaces were linked up with this guy here so he's he's not doing anything bad all right so lots of ones and a five okay I really don't want to jump into here yet um, so, but this this will keep in our sequential order. So we'll put the five there, and then I guess we're just gonna go one, one, which is gonna force us to either get another one or a two right here. I'm kind of pinching down my options, um, but that's fine. So let's do it, but one, one. This guy now is active because, or no. The corridor I don't think is in the room yet, so forget that. I haven't entered the room. I don't think the corridor counts as the room. All right, so two, three, three. This is actually pretty good. As soon as I enter the room now, I'm gonna have to start rolling an extra die, but I'm just gonna put it up there so I don't get it confused. Now, unfortunately, I would love to use this two up here to get that and claim it, but I need it right here to continue my little charade here. So we're gonna go two, three, or wait, do I wanna go this way? Two, three, three, and have connected to this checkpoint so I can get my guided missile. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we're gonna go. So two, three, three. So at this point now, I have gone boom, 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 boom. I have created a sequential line from one checkpoint to the next. I've earned myself another uh, die. I have the highest number in my sequential line is three. So three time has been spent, one, two, three, and I can pick one upgrade. And so we're gonna pick this one to be able to take out these guys as quickly as possible. Um, ideally, getting uh, additional movement allows me to spread out where I place the numbers. Um, so that's pretty good. But again, this one's that eliminate the boss. So having the, the best blaster is probably a good start. But all of these dice have been added now. The Vigilant Hunter is now active. Um, I've got something, got some glue. I apologize in advance for kind of an ugly presentation of a background here, but I needed something hard to, to write on and a knee pre mat doesn't really fit that bill. All right, okay. All right, so a lot of things are about to happen here. First is, is that we definitely rolled a four plus. So the Vigilant Hunter is going to attack us. Shielded cannot be attacked with an odd number. Okay, we'll get to that. But also down here, if the attack trigger, which is this, was a six, take one point of damage, no matter how many threats activate. So there's one point of damage right there. Then he is attacking. He's the only one who's attacking though, so that's good. But he's doing two damage. I don't have a one to discard for defense, so I'm taking both of these points of damage to the face. Now, uh, let me just make sure I know what guided means. If you hit a threat's hit point, you may attack again and mark off the hit point on the direct opposite side. So I think I need both of these dice and I they can't be odd. 
also to go from checkpoint to checkpoint I need to make sure I keep a path clear um, from here to here so I think what we're gonna do is yeah I need to be able to get there and then do a two a five a six and a six And this is a claimed checkpoint, so I believe I could come off of this. So I think I could go five here, and then six, six, boom, boom. So yeah, let's do that. Let's put a five here. I may be incorrect on this, but I think, yeah, once you reach this checkpoint, this is like a space I can come off of. Just like if I claimed an item here, I could come off of that space. Because I know that I can create a path through a space. The sequential number just has to jump over. And so like this would have to be a three or a one. So I'm going to say this is legal. Um, and so I have spent my five. I'm going to spend these two sixes now to use my guided missile to hit it once here and hit it a second time on the other side. Thematically, I like to think it's just blasting right through the guy. All right, um, and then I'm running out of dice though, which is unfortunate. Um, so I'm gonna put uh, six here, because I'm gonna have to draw a line from there to there. It's gonna be a high time cost one, but then I could come way back up here. Remember, you don't, you don't have to think about that I'm in this room right now. Think about just where you can explore. I can use this last two right here and claim this med boost, use it immediately, and there we go. So very good. All right, this, this threat is still active though, so if I roll four plus, yep, and I did. But it's not hitting me with the six. I don't have a one, unfortunately, so I'm gonna take two points of damage, boom, boom. And now we uh, figure out our dice. So, I'm gonna use this four to go right here. No, 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 no. It needs to be a five, because there's a six there. So I'm gonna use one of the fives to go there. And then, or I'm gonna use the only five. I can use a four plus though, because your hit has to equal or exceed the defensive value. So I can use this four to take this guy out, and he has been defeated. Uh, I'm going to use this three to go right here before I forget about this and I'll just circle it now. I can use this when I want to increase my boost or increase a die by two more than likely over here. I could go down here. That's a long trek, but I may make it that way because this is giving me lots of space now to just kind of throw away dice. Um, all right. And then I've got, so I used one three. I've got a four remaining so I can come off of this oh wait I forgot to roll this five for the threat and it was a three so I was safe okay and now I can go four and three and work my way towards this checkpoint now remember, I could run in here and grab that checkpoint, but as long as I leave this guy sitting here, he will continue to attack me no matter where I think I am on the ship um, on any threat roll. So I need to run in here and at least take this guy out. Okay, so low rolls on the black dice, which is good. Um, all right. So to come in here, I need to, I could go three, two, one. And then it doesn't matter what my sequence is after that. So three, two, one, staying in sequential order. Three, two, one. I've now created a path like so. Boom, 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 boom. We'll just go ahead and circle that. Boom, 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 boom. All right, this one's not adding a, a white die, but five, six, five, four, three, three, two, one. I stayed in sequential order. So now, what are we thinking? Are we thinking defense? Yeah, I 
think defense would be better. And I like this ability to reroll a threat die each turn. Is it each turn? Uh, alert, reroll an evil die before the threat phase. Perfect. So yeah, these are evil dice. These are hero dice, I think. Um, anyways. So that technically should have happened at the end of my turn. I jumped the gun. But this is what we're going to do with the five and the six. Um, unfortunately, I can shoot three way, but I got to get orthogonal to this guy. So I'm going to go, it doesn't matter at this point, six and five. The five has to be rolled for reaction damage, and it is a six. So I'm going to take one point of damage from this vigilante pirate. And this vigilante pirate is now active, and he's going to activate off this six. So he is hitting me for one damage, but I can block it with this one. I don't think I need that one, so I have defended it. Um, I also have this, so I could have re-rolled this one die here and not lost it, but I rolled a six right back again, so there we go. All right, so that's spent. Um, I can now use this four to hit him from here. I can, from this checkpoint, go three, four, and then use the six. I need to roll the four for reaction damage though. And it was a three, so we're safe. And then the six will take him out. Okay. So just real quick, uh, you see this space here with like kind of a no sign symbol in it. That's a locked door. If I were to come down here and claim this pass card, the same way I've claimed all these other items, I could use that to open that door or even that door but um, I think I'm okay, because I can just stop now. I have claimed the checkpoint, I can work into this room from this checkpoint, and then we're going after the dungeon boss here, or the ship boss. So, pretty sure that was all my dice. And at this point, I've eliminated all of the active threats, but I'm about to step, <laughs> I'm about to step right here, and this guy's gonna come out very quickly. And he's, again, I'm gonna have to Every time I, uh, or no, once I'm in here, I think I'm good. No, once I'm in here, yeah, every time I step in here, he's going to take a shot at me. So let's think about that, because um, this could hurt. So um, this is reroll a die before the threat phase, which threat phase has happened, nobody Nobody's active right now, so that's not going to help us. And I don't have any ones. Um, so we just have to do this unless... Actually, I could come down here and get this pass card. That's not out of the realm of possibilities. And then I could use my 5 and my 4 to continue my path here. So that's actually... Let's, let's, just, let's just do that. So I'm going to put a 3 here. I don't need to be sequential anymore because I'm not, this is not part of my path from checkpoint to checkpoint. So I can actually just use all three threes right here and claim this pass card. Those have been used. All right. And then I can over here, stay here and go five and four like that. And we're going to come up here and attack this guy from this way and not have to deal with this long corridor here. All right. Again, I've not entered a room. I've not. I've not alerted these two guys yet, so, and not the boss, so the, the six and the four doesn't hurt me at all. Um, and so what we're going to do here is... All right, I can use, let's say, yeah, just another four. Then I will use up this pass key card. So I circle this, and that's just an open spot now. So I can put my other four here. And then I can use my, now this guy, these guys are both active now. I've entered the room. All right, but I can, oh no, I wanted to use the three. That's what it was. I'm gonna use the three right here. 
and then I will attack with the four and the six. Wasn't this a three or was this a four also? I don't remember. I think I may have bumped them, but either way, I can use these two dice here to do my guided missile attack and take this guy out. And then I can use this three it was either three or four, both will work for me. And I have created a continuous line from here to this checkpoint. All right, boom. So six, five, five, four, four, three, three. Check, check, check. So no additional white die. We entered this room, which is two black dice. We're already still rolling two black dice. So we're safe there. I just get an upgrade now. Um, so the question is, do I, do I go for movement? Do I go for defense? Um, when you use a defend gear reroll, you may reroll one additional time. So yeah, let's do this one. All right, but also, hold on. I forgot to give myself six time here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one was also another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've spent a lot of time. Um, Luckily, I only have one more checkpoint to get to, and then the door. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. So one of one of these can't be, I can't use two sixes again, basically. Question is, do I want to even bother with this pirate? I don't have to take out this pirate. I could just straight right now go for the boss, take out the boss, and hit the door. Uh, but that would mean that that's just one additional damage that I'm taking every uh, time I roll those black dice. Hmm. The other health boost is way down here, and then there's one right here. I could work my way this way, shoot him here, come right there. I don't think I would need it. To, I, I think I may with range three, one, two, three. Oh, I, I have to get right here, but then I can go one, two, three, take him out both sides, hopefully, and then work my way down here. Hit up that checkpoint, hit him from this side, and get out of dodge. But it's not increasing any time. I could maybe even come up here and claim one of these on my way out. So let's let's stick around and get rid of this, this pirate here. So alright, so no threats activating. I do need see they put a wall right here, so I can't uh, one, two, three, I need to get at least around this wall to shoot him but also my guided missile won't allow me to hit because his things are on two opposite sides. So how do we want to do this here? It doesn't matter how I use my dice, but I have to stay within one away. So I'm gonna go one and one to see if I can try and get this guy. And then I'm gonna go, until I claim this, this is a blocked space. So then we're gonna go four, three, six. Yeah. Four, three, six, one and one. All right, so he did activate. I do not have a die to throw away for defense. Um, I could, however, use this die to re-roll and I'm safe now, actually. Okay, so I just need to get there and hit this guy as much as possible. So let's use the threes for movement as much as we can. Three, three, yeah, three, three, and then uh, four right here. So that four is gonna have to be rolled for reaction damage and it's a five, so he is, finally going to hit us. 
But then I can use one five from one, two, three away to take him out here. And then, ooh, I would love to get this grenade. Let's put a five here, and that's all my dice. All right, we're safe from the threat. Lots of low numbers here. So I'm gonna use this one. Well, I'm gonna use, hold on. I'm gonna use a two, then a one, and I've claimed that. All right, so I've used those up. I wanna be able to put a five there um, I could put a three here and then go one, three. I'd have to roll for reaction damage, but then I would get the grenade. Three, one, three. So both of these, I'm gonna have to roll for reaction damage. And one of them got me. Keep forgetting I can just work my way down here with some throwaway dice. Uh, oh, okay. Um, all right, so he is attacking me. I don't have a one to throw away because I have not in upgraded my defense gear. So he's gonna hit me for one. I'm quickly losing health here, uh, people. So this, this focus booster can be used to increase or decrease a die. But I don't think I want to use that yet. So I think what we're going to do here is come up here so we don't enter this space and go two, 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 six. So this six is going to have to be re rolled. And it is another hit. And then I will use the final six to take him out. All right. So I have one boost here, a grenade which a grenade allows me to use it one, gain one attack of range five, attack five, when used to mark off any second hit point on that threat. So we're, I mean, we've taken out everybody but the boss. All right. So, and this is another thing here. I don't know if at this point I can basically just kind of keep using my numbers to work down here to get this. Can I just kill time? Uh, this isn't explained in the rules or anything, but it would be a good question for the developers. Um, can I just kill time at this point because I'm safe? Or you know, does he, does he activate when everybody else has been defeated? I don't know, but for right now I'm gonna work on keeping my sequential uh, thing going here. So we're gonna go uh, two, three, two, right there. And then down here, we're gonna go um, four, six. Because all threats have been defeated, so I don't need to worry about these black dice rolls. Um, so, I might save that three and put it up here. That's probably a good idea. Put that three there, we haven't entered the room yet. And then the rest of these I can use, I got two fives. So a four and a six and put my five here and my five there. I've got that and so that's a little bit helpful. All right, I think we're, I think we're doing pretty good here. I think we're in a good spot. So, all right, we're gonna, we haven't entered the room yet. So I can use a good amount of these and that might have to just be thrown away somewhere. All right, so this is going to be a three, a two, a one, and then a two. Um, I could put a six here, because I'm gonna have to. I can make my sequential line to the checkpoint there. Or do I not risk uh, this guy yet? I could go ahead and use my attack though, because it's range five, so that's what we'll do. I'll do this. So I'll put a six there. I'm gonna have to roll for a reaction, and it's a three plus, so he does, he hits me. 
Uh, if you attack this threat this turn, you may not attack at range two or more for the rest of this turn. Uh, but I haven't attacked him yet. Okay, so I think I'm good. I think I'm good there. I have a three in my pool, so I can attack him with the grenade. I'm gonna use up the grenade here. That's a range five attack. Um, range five, five attacks. So one, two, three, four, I'm good there. And then I can knock off any second hit on that threat. So I'm gonna knock off this one because I can go straight through him over here. All right, but he did get me with his reaction. And so that's two damage here. Or no, that's just one damage. I think, I think reaction damage is one no matter what. But we're in a very good spot here to, to finish him off very soon. All right, so his is a three plus. So yes, uh, it was not a six or more. Um, so he's just gonna hit me for two. I don't have a way to block it yet. So we'll just take two damage there. But then I can use some of these to get down here. So there's a two and a two. So here's a two and a two. And then I'm gonna use this guy here. Um, yeah, to turn this into a three, I can increase or decrease it. So this is a three. So I've now gone three, two, three, three, two, two, one, two, 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 three. I'm not gonna circle it, but the worst was three. So one, two, three. I definitely will have time to get out of the building here. Um, yeah, those have all been spent. Um, and then, so I'm gonna go with a four here and a two here. So I can make my line, I'm giving myself options of getting to the door here. Okay, so he is definitely attacking. Um, I can spend this to block one and I can, uh, it doesn't really matter, I can only, oh no, I can reroll, you may reroll one additional time. So there's one. There's two, so he's actually not attacking at all. Um, but now I have very low numbers for attacking him. <laughs> oh man. I should have just taken it. Yeah, why did I do that? So these were both fives, right? That was silly. I should have just blocked for one, taken the other one, because he's only doing two damage. Um, because then at this point I can go two and two, and then use these two dice with my guided attack to go here and here. He has been defeated. And I've also gone from here to here to the door and I have escaped, the highest number being three. So one, two, three. Technically, if you wanna keep up with how well you played through a certain mission, you count up your time, one, two, three, four, five, and that's your score. So the more time you have at the end, uh, the better off you would have done. But that is a full playthrough of Dangerous Space. I'll put a link in the description below where you can go purchase. Um, this is the core set here, so you get four characters and four missions with the core set. I think it's like, you know, $5 for these four pages or something like that. And once you purchase them, you can print them off an infinite amount of times. Again, cut these off so you can mix and match characters and missions. But also they're going to be, I don't know how much each uh, monthly expansion is gonna be, but they will be coming out with a new page uh, each month. So keep your eye out for that. Fun little, very inexpensive roll and write here. Uh, you just need a, a pencil or pen and some D6s in two different colors. So I actually uh, just went ahead and I'm using one deck galaxy dice uh, for these because they were nice, nicely sized. But that's gonna do it. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, there's also Dungeon Pages, which is the uh, predecessor to this one. Uh, has more of a Dungeons and Dragons feel to it versus space, uh, but pretty much plays the same way. So you can 
I'm pretty sure you can purchase those from the same uh, website. So lots of fun stuff there. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.